Welcome to the Barrel Training Video Part 2 by Donkey Kong Genius. Please feel free to reference this time index in order to quickly find topics. One way to assess your timing and making a run for the short ladder is to see Kong holding the barrel and knowing that it's not going to be wild and you're standing around or back behind this ladder and making a dart for it. Try it out. With this method, as long as you know that Kong is about to release a barrel or that the barrel that's in his hand is not going to be wild, you can jump over left and control to the right and then uh, make a dart for the short ladder um, if everything seems to line up correctly. When going up the longer ladder, basically you're just going to wait for the barrel to pass by, you know it's not coming down, and then just go straight up. Sometimes going up the long ladder and then going over to the hammer is the best course of action, in which case you need to slightly pause to make sure that you're not going to be running directly under a barrel that's going to be dropped or a wild barrel that's going to drift over on top of your head. Sneaking up the ladder uh, when there's ongoing traffic requires timing and knowing barrel placement. In this uh, example, I'm starting up the ladder at the same time that an oncoming barrel on the fifth girder is sitting at the top of the broken ladder and Kong is showing a barrel. One thing to keep in mind with the wild barrels and going up ladders is you can go from the 4th to the 5th and the 3rd to the 4th fairly easy, but be careful of the ladder going from the 2nd to the 3rd. As long as you begin climbing the ladder before Kong releases the barrel, you should be able to get to the top of the ladder and jump up in time. Here's an example of just steering barrels away when you're transitioning up to the fifth girder while just running boards. Though steering barrels can be beneficial, sometimes one can go steer crazy. And uh, this is an over-exaggeration of what you would see, but for some reason 
uh, people get uncomfortable and they start just steering every barrel they possibly can and it's actually uh, counterproductive. Uh, there are times where you need to pause and you need to wait and not steer the barrel and that will work to your benefit. The pause and wait method is perhaps one of my favorites and I use it all the time. Uh, obviously you want to wait to see what kind of barrel the Kong is going to throw and then you want to th run as quick as you can up the short ladder. So the wait zone is for the immediate dropping off and picking up of passengers only. There is no parking in a red zone. I also use this method quite often where I will control these two barrels uh, down on the left while I, I'm jumping up I'm controlling this barrel, the second barrel, and then I'm controlling the third uh, to the right. In these examples I'll basically just show you the timing of jumping over barrels while you're making your run to the short ladder and being able to watch Kong where he is in his process. Also you just wanted to give you this example as well of uh, how much barrel control you can do on the fifth girder. All of us at one time or another began to feel unsafe standing between the two ladders on the fourth girder. If for some reason you feel like barrels are starting to pile up and you're not going to be able to make a good transition, get out of there as quick as you can, regroup, and try again. What I refer to as Kong grouping is basically all of the grouping techniques that you can perform on the fifth girder underneath Donkey Kong. This grouping here is as simple as uh, controlling these barrels down, but you also have to watch that uh, last barrel. You don't want to go down unless you know it passes, and then you can go down and re-jump and then transition back up. And here's the grouping technique that I use for the side-by-side -side barrels. As you can see, I run over top of the ladder and jump straight up. If there's time, I can go down and jump the group. Also you can do this trick here if, the th if it's not going to group on the second one. Just like in our last example I use the same technique of moving close to the ladder over top of the ladder and I jump straight up. Then I, if there isn't a barrel you can control on the right that's ready to come down, you can do an immediate back jump when you land. And in this example, we're doing the same jump up, but we can control a barrel uh, while we're up, so we're going to jump straight up. Here I do the same technique, but I'm experimenting to see what kind of things I can pull off. Not 100% safe but you should practice things and try things out. With this formation, uh, we're basically controlling a barrel down or we see a barrel coming down as normal. Um, but the formation forms, we jump up and over. And sometimes you can come back and you can regroup it down here. In this example, I basically do the exact same thing as I did in the previous example. The difference is, is the barrel doesn't get controlled down. And so therefore, I just continue with the sequence as normal, uh, just to stick with the same technique.
This formation can occur in one and only one way. First, you'll see a wild barrel being formed, followed by a potential for the formation on the right. As soon as you see the formation, you begin to run to the left and prepare for your wall jump. You stand just to the left of the edge of the ladder and you're going to jump over to the left and missing the hammer. This is the exact same technique, except for this time we're going to grab the hammer. This is a list of the different X, Space Space X uh, grouping formations that you will encounter uh, while doing Kong grouping. As you can see, they all start up with the two normal uh, spaced barrels uh, that uh, Kong throws in his routine. The first barrel he throws will go off the edge of the sixth girder. The second one will come down the short ladder, shortening the distance between the two. And then, depending on what he does after this, will depend on which uh, grouping technique that you will use. If it's a wild barrel, you have the potential for the XX space X. If there's a pause, and then a normally spaced barrel, you're going to be uh, seeing the X space X space space X, and so on and so forth. For example, with the XX space X, you see these two barrels. So one is thrown, and then another normal barrel is thrown. In this example, we have a barrel, barrel, pause, barrel, and then we have this formation here. When we go down to re-jump barrels, uh, we can run into this exact same formation we've seen before, but we're going to do it between the ladders. And once again, we have seen these barrel formations before. And likewise, uh, the barrel at the top can be in the blue box. Standing directly under a ladder has the same effect as controlling a barrel. Notice that when you proceed to jump uh, these grouped barrels, you'll pull back into this position between, underneath Kong's foot uh, between these yellow lines and then jump back over in case he throws a wild barrel. That way we're actually grouping the wild barrel and getting extra points. The back jump to the hammer is a time-saving technique in order to get to the hammer before the fireball does. After jumping uh, these two grouped barrels, and uh, we know it's safe to proceed down to re-jump. Uh, we may have this formation which we have seen before where we have uh, one over by the small ladder falling off the fifth girder and one over by the ladder. Um, basically we're just uh, doing what we've done before to uh, triple up and get some extra points.
And as always, when we're re-jumping things, we want to make sure that we're waiting to see what Khan's going to throw and try to time our jump accordingly. Once we jump the screwed barrel and we wait for the barrel to go past the ladder and we go down to rejump, as long as it rolls off the sixth girder and then we can control it down and then we can group down onto the third girder. In this variation, after we jump the second pair of barrels that are grouped together closely, now watch for a pause, because when we go down this ladder to re-jump these, if there's a pause, then we can perform this maneuver. This is the same grouping technique, but I'm grouping it from the outside instead. This is an example of me just playing around, uh, getting some triples, but they are very long jumps. I would not recommend them, um, but you can have fun with it. We want to grab the hammer as soon as a fireball gets up to the fourth girder. And likewise, usually you want to stop rejumping barrels when the fireball gets to the third girder. And then afterward, if we're doing some grouping after the hammer, as, as soon as the fireball gets up to the third girder, you want to begin making a run for it because sometimes the fireball will be doing the same thing. This is a rare formation that you see every now and then where there's a pause in Donkey Kong's routine followed by a wild barrel. There are different ways of responding to it. Uh, this is the way I did it on this particular day. When transitioning back to the fifth gritter after re-jumping grouped barrels, we're be mindful of a few different ways of uh, controlling things. When a barrel comes down the small ladder on the right, you may want to throw it down uh, out of the way down the uh, broken ladder just to uh, give yourself um, some extra room to transition. This is just an example of a normal smooth transition. Sometimes you'll get some uncooperative barrels that give you a hard time. Just be patient, uh, try to get out of there if it seems unsafe. Uh, just do your best to survive and get back up top. Likewise, there'll be times when you have this immediate intrusive barrel that comes down Colin's ladder and uh, stops her quick transition. You also want to be mindful that when you are going down the fourth girder to regroup, you need to make sure that you time it right so you don't run into a blue beam, and knowing that they do not roll off the edge of the screen. Sometimes when you go down to re-jump, uh, you'll need to adjust to the right if there's a wild barrel or a 
pause or something like that that doesn't make it a normal smooth transition. Sometimes you have to wait to get back up onto the fifth girder, in which case just uh, continue to control those barrels down and just jump them uh, if they come down, otherwise make the transition. In this section I'll be discussing the lower hammer. Uh, sometimes on the third or fourth level you will want to grab the hammer if you see a wild barrel uh, just in case uh, it could uh, serve as protection for you. While you're waiting for an opportune time to grab the hammer, uh, there are three unique positions here that you want to be aware of. Uh, the far left position is where I normally stand and just jump up and jump barrels while things come along. And then uh, if I feel like that fireball is going to come up, I need to adjust right uh, to snag the hammer before the oncoming barrel comes to me. Uh, sometimes you have to do this to anticipate. And if for some reason I feel like I can uh, adjust right and be able to leech the fireball and jump over the barrel, uh, I can move to the right and jump over the left. Anticipating the fireball is extremely important. If you have an oncoming barrel and uh, you sense you cannot jump it and get back to the hammer in time, you actually have to anticipate worst case scenario with this oncoming barrel uh, that the fireball will be coming up. So you grab the hammer in anticipation. If you're not point pressing and just ignoring uh, the early rising fireball, uh, one method is to, as soon as you see the fireball start to rise, you just right, just a little jump over left and just make a run for it. This is just a map of different possibilities of controlling and steering these barrels down so that you can hammer as many as possible. Uh, there are perhaps as many as over 200 different variations of uh, ways for barrels to come down. During the first three-fourths of your hammer time, you want to get as many barrels as you possibly can. You want to try to control them down, but when things start to clear out, uh, you need to be mindful uh, to maybe steer an extra one down, uh, but don't ever oversteer, because if you do, you can end up in a situation where um, you're having a hard time getting up to the third girder. The basic uh, strategy of using the lower hammer is to wait for as many barrels as you can get. Um, as many as you can jump safely without grabbing the hammer either in anticipation of the fireball or uh, having to address a rising fireball. Once you feel like you have enough barrels, go ahead and grab the hammer and start uh, hammering away.
And as always, anytime there's an oncoming barrel, you tap that jump button real fast just in case the uh, hammer time runs out with an oncoming barrel that you do not hit. Here's an example of uh, just being mindful of uh, which would be the best path uh, up to the third girder. Uh, this is just an example of uh, steering some barrels down with a lower hammer and transitioning to the third girder uh, via the short ladder. And this clip is just an example of being mindful of the location of the fireball, uh, which ladder he's around, and also being aware of the uh, formation, barrel formations that's coming uh, towards you and whether or not you can uh, manage to jump through it uh, without that possible rising fireball. Not to mention not standing too close to a ladder with the hammer and also uh, being ready to snag that fireball if he comes up. Interestingly enough, halfway through the hammer cycle, the mallet begins to flash yellow. Uh, this may be helpful for somebody who is uh, interested in that. Uh, otherwise, uh, just continue to, to be uh, aware of the life and uh, around where in the music the, the hammer usually ends. There are times um, that you want to be mindful of when to control the barrels down and when not to. Uh, just because you have the hammer and you're trying to control barrels down, there are moments when you may just omit trying to control um, just to allow it to get past you to set up a favorable barrel formation on the third girder. In this example, uh, you'll have uh, one or two barrels coming at you. You jump a little early so that you can grab the hammer after jumping the barrels and coming down and smashing. Uh, you can also time jumping over, um, but I wouldn't recommend that. Jumping backwards. Um, but the last second is uh, the favored method of being able to uh, uh, jump over a barrel and snag the hammer. And as you can see how I could control the barrels down the right hand side a little bit better. Also sometimes as a last resort you can jump straight up and snag the edge of the hammer. This is insane. This is insane. See how possible this is? I mean, what do you do? What do they expect you to do? There was like 18 fireballs and 20 barrels. You said, no, you can't just stand there. You either have to jump or move out of the way. Timing when to grab the top hammer is as simple as waiting to jump at the same time that a barrel hits the bottom of this broken ladder.
This is just an example of hammering on the right side of the broken ladder. And this is an example of the benefits of hammering on the left side, if you're interested. Given the fact that your hammer can run out soon, um, using this method to ensure that you can snag barrels on the upswing. It's as simple as moving over, under, and then out. In this section I will show you different variations of transitioning to grab the top hammer. Though I did want to mention that if a wild barrel is thrown, adjust the left just a little bit so it doesn't hit your feet. As long as you begin going up the short ladder at the same time the oncoming barrel is at this ladder, then you will be able to make it. If for some reason you're point pressing and you want to maximize your top hammer and you don't want to grab it too early so you can get a smash in your first swing, uh, you can jump to the left, bounce off the wall. We also need to be mindful where Kong is in this process because you don't want a wild barrel being thrown at you. One way of timing the jump over is to adjust left and then initiate your jump over right grabbing the hammer at the same time the barrel, left edge of the barrel is uh, dead smack in the middle of these two ladders or that the barrel is directly underneath Kong's foot. In the rivet training video I described some of the behaviors of firefoxes. Well fireballs function exactly the same. Uh, once again you want to position yourself far enough away so that you can anticipate the fireball coming directly for you and can respond but close enough to opportunities to be able to uh, get up to the very top without uh, uh, having to waste any extra time and uh, leaving yourself to potential danger. And the Firefox is being a nuisance, just to, to start grouping some things, just keeping your safe distance, but making the best of your time.
This will be an example of uh, that as long as you're down on the girder, you're lower than the fireball, and it will stop. Hopefully. Sometimes you can get a really favorable freezer that allows you to inch right up the top, and then you can sit here and you can leech off it for as long as you possibly can, getting lots of extra points. One of the worst kinds of fireballs are the ones that are simply all over the place. What's worse than one is two. Uh, sometimes you just have to make a run for it and uh, hope for the best. If you end up getting trapped up there, you may have to pull off some maneuvers where you could survive by jumping on the edge perhaps, or jumping off the wall. Whatever it works. Most of the time, as soon as the fireball gets to the top of a ladder, it will either freeze or it will move to the left. This demonstrates that you can straight jump and have a fireball go under you and a nifty little wall jump. Here's a nifty little dance I did maneuvering uh, around the ladders under Kong. Knowing a fireball has a tendency to go left, you can wait for it if it comes up too early and do a wall jump, and it may buy you some time. Hitching the fireball on the first barrel stage is a basic point pressing technique. Sometimes when you jump up at the last second and go up, sometimes you can catch the timer before it clicks over. Also, when you're point pressing the stage, sometimes you can't get up to the last second. As long as your jump lands at the bottom, you can make it up. The key to grouping on the fifth girder on levels one through three is being able to stand directly under Donkey Kong's foot. Because as I mentioned earlier, wild barrels when they're released will move towards Mario, so it'll get lobbed over to your right. Here are some examples of leeching uh, more than 100 points off the same barrel. This particular maneuver can be technically done off the edge of any girder. Uh, it just has to be timed right and most of the time it's not used because of its risk.
This example shows you the mechanics of the triple jump. When you're beginning to point press the barrel stage, you need to be mindful to try to jump as many barrels as you can because the timer bonus goes down 100 every time a barrel is released. So in order to get those 100 points back or to net more, you have to jump those barrels, being mindful of them, grouping them, and uh, making sure you go up the girders on the far ends so that you can snag as many points as you can. And sometimes, time permitting, you can snag uh, 100 points while running to the ladder on the right or jumping over at the right time. A couple of things to understand about steering barrels. Uh, one is that the direction of the joystick is what actually controls the barrels and not the movement of Mario. Uh, you could be jumping left and then hit right while you're in the air and control a barrel on the right. Uh, you could be on a ladder and press left or right to control barrels uh, as well as just running left or right on a girder. But also being on the exact same horizontal position as a ladder, even if it's two or even three girders up, uh, it will basically still steer the barrels as if you were controlling them. No matter what happens, your movement and position is the same. This is your basic jump and steer method. You're jumping to the right, and while you're in the air, you're pushing left in order to steer the barrels. This can be done when there's a pause in Donkey Kong's routine. Thank you for watching the barrel training video. Uh, please view my kill screen games and other training videos for more learning opportunities. Please like this video and subscribe to Donkey Kong Genius and view me on Twitch at clchambers00. Links provided in the description.